Say no too many times, they stop calling. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I didn't want to keep saying no, but it was nice, and uh, I'm back, and you know we still have some work to do. But I'm gonna miss it. And you're here until the 18th, and yeah, then when does your next project in Calgary start? Uh, good question. Ah! That's, that's what all those your meetings. Next project yeah. in Calgary start. <laughs> that's what all those meetings are about. We don't know. Well, about. you should be having a meeting with this person. <laughs> So, she's an actress as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Did you guys see famous. that video that I sent you? Yeah. He's behind an interview recently in our, in our country. This is very different from India and the US. Oh, and yeah. And here. And what sure. we're known for being in Calgary is the premier magazine uh, I'm here with. Right, right. We wanted to show you kind of what it looks like in the style. And what your spreads will look like. And what your spreads right. could potentially look like as well. We have a lot of footage from the interview that Quinn I was so sad that I didn't get to see you guys that day. Of course we had to come back. We did, no, we I just missed you. It was by the minute. First one, actually. I have no one. idea. I wasn't really clear what it was. I know. And uh, we were there and, and everybody was focusing on Kevin rightfully right. so and Braden and all. So I was just like, all right, I'm oh. in the way. I'm in the way here. So I left. No, no. When, when we were upstairs. Oh, well, yeah, because that was the focus and there should have been the focus on that. Um, but, I feel like not enough people but we do miss focus the on mighty producers, queen. though. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've been called that once or twice. The mighty queen. This is cool. Very cool. Yeah. That's a gorgeous cover. It goes to chapters it. across Canada and locally. Quinn is actually on the cover of the next issue. As she should be. Which is coming she out. She should be. Well, she's got a lot of things. When's it coming out? Uh, Very soon. Yeah, yeah, it's Christmas. January. January. Yeah. And I'm here with awesome. Magazine. Nice. Two yeah. giants and then us. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Guys. I feel like not enough people pay attention to producers though on how much work you guys put in, as well as like what your purpose is. So well, it was all kinds. Wait, wait, wait. It True. Was kind. I heard him. Uh, he 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 did a, a live uh, chat today. He does a live chat once a week. But I was listening to him. And he mentioned it again and reminded us we came up here. We had two weeks. Yes two weeks mm -hmm. to put this entire movie together and it for it it was like it was <laughs> but for the so crews <laughs> of calgary we all got it done we could never have done this anywhere else but calgary and i mean it uh, everybody just said okay let's go let's do it we could do it people here are excited well, to work. And you wanted to do it in the, in the, in the 
states in two different states, and luckily we pushed against that. We pushed them to come up here to Calgary for all kinds of reasons. Because a, uh, it was incentivized better, and, and we had had the experience three years ago with the crew, so we could uh, speak for how great they were. And we went, you know, this is perfect. Now we didn't know we were going to get two weeks of prep. We thought we were going to get four weeks of prep, which, but you know, and nevertheless. The decision was a good one because if there were anywhere else, it would have been a fail. So the yeah. fact that it was a success is attributable to the great people here in Castle. Hard work, hard working, dedicated. Yeah. The dedication is amazing. Uh, the talent is amazing. The way we are treated is awesome. But then again, we treat them. I mean, it's like a family thing up here. And, uh, so I'm gonna miss it. Want to come back as soon as possible? But we just have to figure out which one that is. I know Kevin has. Uh, Kevin's talking about a Western. Uh, we have a couple of meetings left. Uh, folks want to do uh, a big budget movie, which we would be involved in. But we have other things too. We have something going on in New Jersey. We have something going on uh, in LA. So we have other things going on, but it's just basically what I say. Show me the money, and then we go to work. So. And this was your second production. Second, second one here, uh, both with Kevin, and both with the people who brought us here. Uh, we love is Polly School, Jason. Yeah. 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 Love yeah. Jason and, and uh, Scott Jones with Alberta Film. And both of them, we had built a relationship uh, with them on the last one and right. had a chance to do it again with them this time. And Luke together. Oscovedo with, and with the Film yeah. Commission. Right. I mean, yeah. He turned this into from a million dollar uh, film endeavor to multi billion dollars like last year you guys went over a billion dollars in film revenue that's incredible. Yeah. so i mean that's like and it was post covid and during covid so you still were able to do that during covid mm -hmm. which i think is pretty cool. and, and i have to shout out to him too again because you know one, you know we say this because it's real but we came the first time he helped us solve so many problems and you know i've worked with film commissioners in, in the states all around and I have to say, most of them are great salespeople that get you to come in. But once you come in, they don't do a lot to help you. And that's just reality. Um, he does it. Luke, he not only gets you to come in, he does all the support work and his office does everything to help yep. you. So, yep. you know, it's, it, he's an amazing guy. Like he's, he's he's no, amazing listen, team. he's the reason why yeah. you guys went well over a billion dollars in yeah. revenue. Uh, oh, so, so think about it. So, uh, Calgary, amazing. You know, the U.S. dollar's worth uh, dollar twenty-seven or dollar twenty-five right now. They give thirty percent rebate. So what happens? You have all these people working. They pay taxes. The Americans pay taxes here. I have to pay taxes here. And I go out and I spend a hundred dollars on dinner. And then everybody else that's working buys stuff, and gas, and food and whatnot. So the province makes their money back plus. There's been so many roadblocks, though. Finally, it seems this year they're opening up to promoting the film industry. Well, they changed really it. Tough. They revamped it. It used to mm -hmm. be like up to a year to get your rebate back. Yes. Now it's 90 to 120 days. And that's important. Bang. Right? Yes. And that's a, yes. And that's a big item. But that's also credit to the film commission and the new people who are uh, finally know, coming in. Yeah. And they understand the benefit to the province and to the country. I think COVID, too, has really opened people's eyes to like, wow, we need other streams of income into our provinces, yeah. and film is a huge opportunity. And Calgary and Alberta in general has so many diverse landscapes and locations. Beautiful. Places. Well, think about it, right? We're good. No, I was going to say, pick this hotel alone. We put all our actors up here. Uh, we paid them for a screening. We all spent money in, in the restaurant. We've spent money in the restaurant. We had a party here, um, and um, so the guy that runs it, John, um, John Jason, Johnson, John Johnson, opened up his doors to us. Then Jason Juan Lim is doing the movie. He's putting his people up here, and then David, who works for us, he put his people up here. So before you know it, one person at the Hyatt, John Johnson, incredible guy, um, he turned this into three or four movies. Now bringing their people here to this hotel. It's a great hotel. Mm -hmm. And we're very happy. Yeah, they've been fabulous. Security and safe. Yeah, yeah. And, 
but that's the kind of thing, and, you know, so that's why we're looking forward to come back up, hopefully with Kevin and Lisa again. Yes, but also maybe don't you know, just work with so. Kevin Sorbo. No, 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 it's, it's, it's my time. third one. It's my third one How with Kevin. How do you guys meet? There must be a story. Oh, oh there is a story. Oh, yeah. my God. I have to, Kevin? I have to tell it. Kevin I have to tell it. Okay. <laughs> so I get a phone call from uh, a fellow in uh, Alabama. And he said to me that Kevin Sorbo was looking for a producer. And he gives me Kevin's number. And I call Kevin. And uh, he and Sam, Sam Sorbo, who you know, his wife, they set up this big interview with me. Okay, yeah. So I walk into this gorgeous home with this huge table. I, and I sat at that and I felt like like uh, the knights. Like yeah. the knights of honor when you're going to have dinner. <laughs> And I look up, and there's a life-size painting of Kevin as Hercules. Oh my gosh! So that was a little that was a little intimidating. I'm like, oh, he's full of himself. <laughs> but then Sam comes down, and she literally said to me, "It's not Kevin you have to impress; it's me." So if anybody knows Sam Sobo, that is true about Sam Sobo. She's a force. And I went, oh God. And then Kevin comes out and he's this huge, good looking sweetheart, man. Hey, James, nice to meet you. How's it going? I'm like, okay. So you directing? He goes, yeah, yeah. I said, okay. I said, uh, you know, gave my resume, whatever. And they, they asked for references. And um, gave a bunch of references. But he, his first call was uh, James L. Honore, executive vice president of Sony TriStar Columbia Pictures, who's a dear friend of mine and who shepherded me into the film industry. He was my rabbi. He he was able to get me films starting out uh, from Jurassic Park. He was able to get me uh, deals at Kodak, like for nothing, and get me free cameras in the beginning. So, and, and he, uh, he touted me and literally kept me called me up. Okay, you're our guy. I went to Birmingham, Alabama, and it wasn't easy. I brought in a team, and we knocked it out of the park, and we brought it in. It was a great movie. It was in the theaters. It was called Let There Be Light. And they called me for uh, Miracle in East Texas with the movie you guys saw. And uh, right away I called John Duffy. I said, John, listen, I need you to come to Canada with me. First we sat down and we did the budget in California. And we were like, we can't make it here. So have you guys worked together before? That was our first time. We had just we had worked together as actors. He acted producer. in a movie that I pre was yeah. producing down yeah. in New Mexico, but that was the first time we came together. But we went to Kevin and we said, we can't do it here, we have to do it in Canada. Okay. And when we all came to Canada, we loved it, and it's our second time back. So, and then on that point, there he goes. Um, I came up, because they had something going on, I came up with three weeks of prep, and I came up, and then First. he came up a week after me, and we had, once again, a short prep, and we pulled that yes. miracle off. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and that was my, first, that that was my first time up in Calgary, and I'm like, so I got hard. three weeks, I've never been to Calgary, and it, it was easy. And, was, and I, I, we it have was a joke. Four, it was 4th of July. I you, were, yeah, no, you guys were. July. He, he, him and Kevin celebrated the 4th of July back in LA while I'm up here trying to put That's the picture together. We were at a pool <laughs> party. But we were talking business. <laughs> yeah, sure you uh -huh. were. Working so hard. <laughs> but it was so Not much drinking. fun. That first one was so much fun. And, and I said to him after it was over, I said, you know, it felt like, because I've done about 40 movies in that capacity as a line producer. And I said, I felt like I didn't work a day. I went on vacation. And then James says to me, so are you going to give back all the money we paid you? I was like, ha, 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 very funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just want to uh, go on record to say uh, I work with a lot of producers, and a lot of them are great. But working with John is amazing. He's not only a great producer, he's a dear friend. I love him like a brother. So I, I just can't wait to do uh, number three with him. Yeah. It's going to be great. I feel like that's how it's everyone in this entire production Everyone I've met was just so nice, so generous, yep. so yep. wonderful to be around. The attitude, it's amazing. Well, so, we, you know, that's kind of our philosophy, and we do, you know, we take it to, to the level we know. We did it last time, both of us, because I remember, you know, we were shooting down at uh, CL Ranch, and we were at Scott's Ranch, and there was a lot of extras, and it was a period piece. And, you know, at the end of the day, we went around and we thanked the extras, and the extras called up the, the people who cast them and said, who are these people? Nobody thanks extras. Yeah. And we went around and personally thanked them and thank you for being part of it. Thank you for helping us. And, and they were kind of blown away by that. But for us, it was, well, that's what you do. It starts Because people top. help you and you appreciate it. It starts What's the, the big deal? Why wouldn't yeah, you do absolutely. that? And, you know, it, it, and it makes for a great atmosphere with everybody. 
we treat everybody the same way we want to treat ourselves in the respect. It but shows. This, but it getting really, back to really Kevin, um, I mean, he has so much going on. I'm so happy he did the interview. I mean, I can't wait to see what you put together for him. Yeah. But he is not only an incredible actor, awesome director, great writer, great humor. And that's the thing, right? He's this incredible human being. Sam too. And Braden that was you here. Their son. Her I know I, I know I know their daughter. I know their other son. They have an incredible family. They've been homeschooled. The kids are bright, articulate, um, they have goals, and they're so polite. But it starts with Kevin and Sam. And they raise an incredible family and uh, we love them. I mean, yeah, we're lucky to be more love. We love them. They're, they're family to us, and uh, Kevin's awesome. I'm sure, they'll appreciate your kind words. I think you know it's easy to say it when they're true. You know, it's so easy. You guys are very optimistic and happy. You know, it is very often that you find people who business industry as long as you guys that are still not you know jaded in any way. Well, because most of them today you can't even so, have a conversation with those people. So it, you know? it's the philosophy. Right? John and I talk about this all the time. It's like, if we never work again, we're okay. Yeah. You know, but when we work, and he says it brilliantly, right? When we say, I want to work now at the point in your career, in my career, with the people we want to work. Right? And, you know, he's got so many calls. He goes, no, no. Yeah. He's very touted. I mean, he's on over 40 movies. He, he's, you know, a big star as far as producers are concerned in Los Angeles, more than I am. And, uh, he says no, and I've said no a lot. Uh, it doesn't feel good. No. no we were going to ask you though. Know, what makes you want to put your time to a project? Kevin. Kevin Sorbo. Kevin Sorbo. The so you we, we come up here twice with Kevin. It's my third one with Kevin. So Kevin calls. What do you say? We go. Well, you know, it, 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 you, as a, over the years, I've worked with what I say the good, bad, and the ugly, <laughs> and um, I prefer to work with the good nowadays and not the bad and ugly. There's a lot of bad and ugly in Hollywood. And so it's easy to walk away from that when you're able to realize, you know, what the good is. And that's what we surround ourselves with now. And like I said, there's people up here like Jason Wanlib. And I've told him, I said, Jason, if you ever needed me to show up and you didn't have any money to pay me, I'd come work for you for free. Because it's that kind of relationship with people when you have loyalty and you have people you love being around. It's not about money. It's about getting the work done. And, and we, we're there to support each other. You got my back, I got your back. We're there to help each other. So when you find that family, and that's what we consider it a family, we're there for each other forever. And then the people who come to us that are not family, then it's, they're trying to buy our services. Well, they got to be good because if they're not good, we don't want to spend our time with them. It's not worth it to us anymore. We're past that. Well, good to you guys. You know, so. I feel like as well when you try to define what success is, it's really finding the things that make you happy and spending your day to day doing things that you really enjoy. And if you're working with people that you don't enjoy being around, you're not gonna be happy. But no, but take it, take it to another level. What is success? Remove work. I get pleasure, and it took a long time to get here, having a great cup of coffee, morning, as silly as it sounds, going, I'm gonna get to go to the gym today. You know what, I'm gonna take my dog for a three mile hike. To me, that's success. Enjoying the simple things in life because you, I mean, you can work and work and work and at the end of the day, what do you have to show for it if you're not happy, if you don't feel blessed, if you don't feel love for other people, if, if you don't enjoy, oh, that's honeysuckle, man, I just smelled that, that is honeysuckle tree, you know, it's just, wow, stop, smell the roses, you know, the old cliche, stop and smell the roses, you know, there's people that can't smell the roses and it took me a long time to understand when they say enjoy the journey. What the hell are they talking about? Enjoy the journey. journey sucks. No, man. Enjoy the journey. You're going to learn so much on the way up. And you're going to be a better person if you really pay attention and learn. Never stop learning. Every day I learn. Every time I go to work, I learn. But yeah, it, it's the journey. And it's enjoying and appreciating every moment and every morning when you wake up. Because you never know. I've experienced that in life. You do never know. I've lost people tragically like that. And you just. Well, and you put it, there was one word that you said there that you put it very well. It's not, I have to go to the gym, it's, I get. I get, I can't wait. I enjoy it. 
Now, there have been times I walk to the gym and go, no, nah, I don't want to be here. <laughs> don't literally, don't I've got, be here. I have literally turned around, got my car, and drove home. <laughs> and I tell my friends, they go, you went all the way to the gym? I, yep. I just wasn't feeling it. I turned around and went home. But it is, the, it, <laughs> and that's what, would, you know, I think when you get to that point, we come from, you know, from tough life. This is an old beginning of life. We've done a lot of different things in our life. And, you know, that journey, I mean, I, I, I just feel every day I get up and I'm grateful and blessed. I mean, I grew up in poverty. I dropped out of high school when I was 15. I worked in paint factories. I worked in the post office. I know hard work. I've done a lot of hard work in my life. And to be into this industry, to do what we do, I go, how did this happen? I am just so blessed every Even day. You, that, so. you know, it's, and, and I'll never get over that feeling. I mean, I, it's, it'll never go away because I always look at it and go, you know, this is what I came from, this is how hard life can be, and this is, you know, to do the stuff you love, whatever it is, you know, for me it's this, for somebody else it might be bartending, whatever you love, you're having a good time, it's not work, I don't work, I've I done worked in decades, I've done construction, I've cleaned bathrooms, I'm proud of it, yeah, we all start somewhere, yeah, you know, you know, uh, having those life experiences and having those yeah. different jobs is what gives you the appreciation of so, when you find something so I, I like to do this one quote that I, I take credit for because I made this one up. <laughs> <laughs> We're all bus boys in heaven. I don't care how much money you got here, man. When you go where you go, you're the same. Everyone's the same. Every so we're all bus boys in heaven. So that is the philosophy we take in going back to the extras. Hey, how you doing, man? I remember you from the last movie. Thanks for coming back. Or on this show, we had extras repeat. I was like, did they run out of extras? Because <laughs> you were in that scene, and now you're in this scene, and then you were in the scene tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. We employed, I was going through uh, customs uh, yesterday, and uh, I got asked every single time by about four or five people, because you, you have to go through different sections. What, what's your business here? Why are you here? I said, well, I'm visiting some people and I'm taking some meetings. What do you do? I'm a producer. Well, are you employed? Or no, I employ close to 300 people in Calgary for the second time. And they look at me and they go, come on in. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> and I'm proud of that. You know, we made Christmas for a lot of people happy. Yeah, so that's cool. That's so cool. Oh, we see that. Whenever there is a project, Yeah, because you have such a small talent pool, so they're like, oh good, I get to go work again, because it may be, it may be three months, four months between projects, so they get to go and do what they love to do. Well, smart people, as artists and producers, thinking of a town like ours to come to, it means something to us that we're on the map, because we have produced really big projects here that win Oscars and stuff. We're huge, huge. We're big fans, and you can always call us big fans. Calgary and Alberta, and we'll definitely always sing your praises. Next time you come, we're going to get you white hatting. What's that? <laughs> I can't believe we didn't use this What's one. that? White, white hatting? hatting is like the traditional thing that a lot of the celebrities get done. Um, what is that? I think it's a tattoo. It's a <laughs> you're going to get tattoos. It's kind of a ceremony where you get a hat that's literally white. A white hat. And we bring somebody from the tourism of Calgary, and oh, they really? honor you, do oh. a little party. Sounds so when like you guys come back, call us, we will. and then we will and we set will. something up real nice for you. Nice. But, you have to do the white hat in the summer, because I ain't coming back here and wear it anymore. Well, that's up to you guys. <laughs> I, 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 Saturday, Some Saturday, I'm on a process trailer outside, towing the car with cameras on it. The actor's all warm. I'm, it's 14 degrees Fahrenheit. You with the day you're not working. You wow. Set that up. I was sitting in the, in the truck. I felt, I felt how cold it yeah, was. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to that. Yeah. I had to take a hot shower now. <laughs> yeah. But it, but it, once again, even this time, we got blessed with the weather. Good weather. Because it stayed relatively good was, for us throughout the whole shoot. Weird. It could have been a really bad nightmare for us. And it, it, once again, we got blessed up here. But last time we got blessed, we finished 
miracle when he's in Texas, and then one or two days fires. after. Fires. You, you guys had those fires, fires three years ago. And then coming oh, up, all the oh, way up to Bam. That would have shut us yeah. down. That would have shut us down. But two we days. Here so both now. times, I guess, they were yeah. looking out for us. In D.C., yeah. the roads out there, like you know, the main the Hall of Road is yeah, well, and it all started with those fires. You guys fire. killed everything, and now we can uh, soak it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Even for me, I was a background. But wait, we, we missed something too in this interview. What? The mighty Quinn. Oh my God. <laughs> and tell us about mighty your Quinn. your your She's career as Miss America Calgary. <laughs> yeah, so I am officially competing for Miss Universe Canada. This May is when it's tentatively set because of COVID. They're a little. Um, so that's happening in May, and then I will represent Canada in Miss Universe next December. How long have you been doing that? So it's kind me? of funny. I actually haven't been doing pageantry a lot. Okay. I started in the modeling and acting industry. I okay. landed my first lead acting role the last two years ago. And that's where I met Jill, actually, was on the set of February's Dog. And... February's dog. So it'll be coming out this year. It's all centralized around men's mental health and how men struggle in the workplace and when they lose their jobs, how much of a difficulty it is for men to have that mindset of, you know what, it's okay if I lost my job, it's okay if I'm not a provider. And, you know, men are often told, fuck up, you're a man, be strong. So I was really proud to be a part of that project and just kind of showcase that, you know, mental health is important for men and women alike. And then moving forward, I kind of started my own show, Let's Talk Mental Health, and this year it is progressing now as we've wrapped February's dog, I'm progressing into the Body Love Project. So I'm a professional luxury boudoir photographer, and I empower women through the power of embracing their feminine side yeah. and showcasing their beauty in a way that they've never seen before. Awesome. So I literally help women feel like queens every day. That's and awesome. That's my brand, and that's, that's awesome. why I wanted to, you know, expand my platform because Miss Universe. Canada so now, Miss Miss platform. Universe representing Canada Miss Universe. I had the honor of directing Miss Universe from Puerto Rico, Dianara Did Torres. Dianara was in the nail for me. Yeah. She's married to Mark Anthony. Uh, yeah. Incredible lady, author, raising beautiful children, so focused, so warm, so. Still has that European, it's about family and food, and she cooked for us, and stunningly beautiful like you are, and a great actress like you are as well. And yeah, I had the honor of working with her and directing her. It is incredible. In Philadelphia. Oh my gosh, that sounds like such an incredible experience. Well, I directed 10, produced 20. I don't have this guy's resume. But I've been in uh, 65 projects as an actor. Um, the big one right now, Jungle Cruise with The Rock. <gasps> He's from here. The oh Rock is there. Oh yes. my God. He was Everyone freaks out and so cool to town. work with. <laughs> I was, oh, yeah. it's all over oh, man, I was I was on the set for about a month in Atlanta. Yeah. And I'm still in the movie. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but it's so funny because they bring him on. They call him DJ. Dwayne Johnson. DJ, that's his nickname. He comes on the boat. We had this big boat in the jungle in Atlanta. They like, mm -hmm. made a jungle. And uh, the director said, okay, let's rehearse. There's no introduction. So I was never introduced to him physically. And, you know, hi, I'm going to be doing the scene with you. So there's all these background people around me. And, and he comes out. And uh, I play the Italian tourist in the movie. So he says, uh, you got to change course. Go upstream. You know, but he is. <laughs> the way he went. Have you seen the movie? Uh, seen so, so I said, scusi. <laughs> it's a safe, no? And he goes, yeah. But... And he, he was searching for me in the crowd because he didn't know who said, because I, I'm in a white suit like everybody else with fedora and everything. And I'm like, it's me. So he looks at me and goes, yeah, say, but he looked at me. All of a sudden, it, you go right in your head, you go, oh my God, this guy's a movie star. <laughs> He's a movie star. He just has that, whatever that is. He's, you know, he's gorgeous, he's big, he's strong. His eyes are clear. He's drinking muscle milk on the set. Four hours a day. Yeah, he works out nine hours a day. <laughs> and he was so kind. And at the end, I think it was brother man, man. That was great, brother man. Get you know, and he was uh, awesome. And he takes direction from the director. 
every take, the director would come up to him and say something. Okay, yeah, we'll try it that way. So humble. And I was very impressed. Very impressed by him. Biggest box office star going right now, right? I, yeah. I spade, like a really actor amazing. right now. Yeah. He's amazing. He's amazing. Jungle Cruise with Rock. Go see it. <laughs> if, you, if you stream it, I'll make a penny. So go, go for it. I'll rewatch it. <laughs> and then I, next I, year, Miracle when he's Texas. It's on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. So from acting and producing, what are your favorite parts of <laughs> He's my favorite part of acting <laughs> right there. Uh, I started out in this world uh, acting uh, purely by most of my life. And my the door opens up accidental. I go through and I would break myself. I've done it many, many, many times in my life. So I started out was uh, rather shy and I was doing some writing. I went back to school after I dropped out of high school and I had to get up and improv and I was terrified. <laughs> so I started, once again, when I was afraid of something, I took it on, so I started studying acting, and I acted in plays and movies, and I did all that, studied in New York, went to L.A. as an actor, and then uh, was pursuing that for a while, and then um, I was also a counselor for Runaway Kids in Hollywood, and so one of my co-counselors started directing rap videos, and so he said to me, uh, why don't you be my production manager? And I said to him, what's that? And I didn't know what that was. So he explained it to me, and I went, oh yeah, that's easy. So, next thing I know, I was his production manager on all these rap videos, and then I bluffed my way into a line producer on a feature make film, it. <laughs> and once I did the first one, that just started me in that direction. So I kind of moved away from acting and moved into the producing the line producer side, and occasionally I would do a part in the movie here or there, but I was more focused on the producing side, and it just became my journey. Um, so that's for me, he's got a different one. I started acting, um, 28 years old after a divorce. I was kind of blown away and I was home. And my mom uh, gave me an article that they were looking for extras in Ghostbusters Part 2. <laughs> so my brother uh, and I went down to 57th Street in Manhattan, New York City. It had to be 10 below zero Fahrenheit. Be. You and Nicole, you're not a fan. Damn, it finds me. Hey, I'm kind of it. <laughs> so we're there, freezing. I thought it was the next best thing to penicillin. <laughs> and my brother hated it, and he's still in New York, and I moved to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. There we I are. Mean, that was my start, I thank my mom. So she, if she you guys were me. starting all over again, especially with just the changes in the industry in the last few years, how would you start again? Fresh. Say you had no experience, nothing. Tomorrow you wanted to get into the industry, what would you do? I would stay in school and be a doctor or <laughs> <laughs> that's I know, just, nowadays it's that's, impossible that's to get into the industry the now. It's so I would stay in school. If, if, I was, if I was 18, 19, 20 again, although I have no regrets, I don't know. Maybe I'd stay in school, but... I don't know. I have a lot of friends that are have businesses and have families and everything, and, and they're just not happy. I'm really happy, so maybe I would do it exactly the same way. Nice. Well, you know, I, I don't know. All my life has been whatever I've done. I've turned it into what I wanted to be, and so I have no regrets. Uh, I love it. Um, and but what I always tell people when I speak, I do motivational speaking as well, and that's why I do my Facebook lives. Um, it's all about your belief, you know, because a lot of actors, particularly if you're going into the acting, I do a lot of work with military vets in L.A., uh, a lot of them out of the military and the actors, and one of the big challenges is it's hard, it's, it, and you know, what happens is people think that someone else is going to help you, your agent, your manager, and, and you know, the thing I say is you've got to take 100% responsibility for your life. It's your life, it's not your manager, it's not your agent, it's not your family, it's yours. So you gotta decide that you're gonna make it and you're gonna do whatever it takes to make it. So when obstacles come up, overcome them. When challenges come up, overcome them. Don't give up, just keep moving forward until you make it. And, and, and if you have to change and pivot and maybe, you know, you were gonna do it this way but now you're doing it that way, that's okay. It, it, you don't have to go in the direction you thought you were going as long as you're going to the direction you can succeed at and you're happy with that process, you're happy with that journey. So that's what I got to say. So I, I tell them just take control of your life. I need to make Go for your dreams. Your yeah, go for your dreams. Well, he mentioned reinventing. Uh, he has reinvented himself, and so have I. I mean, 
So you move out as an actor, you start waiting tables. And that's, it's hard, <laughs> you know? For me, it was kind of stinky. I didn't Being like character it. character building. I didn't like it. <laughs> hungry people are nasty people. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in LA. <laughs> so I, 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 I had a friend, he put a camera in my hand, he got me some lenses, he taught me about lighting. I opened up a photography studio, oh. like you. Uh, I, I owned a photography studio for like 12 to 15 years. I was doing fashion, I was doing headshots in Los Angeles. It was called LAHeadshotPhotography.com. And I was very successful at it. Then I kind of got burnt out. I was like, well, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? You know, in between producing. And I was producing and directing all along. You know, and then getting busier and busier and busier. I said, well, what am I going to do? A friend of mine, I produced a movie called All In. It was a poker movie. And he said, well, uh, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'm not really into photography anymore. You know, I just got paid really well to produce this movie about a month later. He said, why don't you come do transportation with me? I became a local 399 Hollywood teamster. So now DJ, Directors Guild of America, Screen Actors Guild of America, and I love being a teamster. So I'm a gang boss, captain coordinator. I moved into the commercial division. So I basically produce all the transportation on commercials when I'm back home in Los Angeles. I get a pension, I get a health, I can still take off and go do all this stuff with you guys. And so reinventing, reinventing, reinventing. And that's what we, we do. Yeah, as artists. And you know, when I go back and we talk about reinventing, like I, in the last year, told me I wrote uh, a second memoir in my life. I have two books right now, two memoirs that are written for publishers. And they basically tell the story of my life in South Bronx to Hollywood and, and some other stories. So I got two books that will be out there that hopefully will be published next year. So once again, you reinvent yourself. You know, you know, I never expected to write books. That wasn't on my agenda. But then I felt that, you know, I had been given such a uh, adventurous life that I needed to share the stories. There's so it wasn't, power in stories it wasn't for me as much as it was like, I didn't want to sit there and write, but I felt the stories needed to be told. And so I said, well, I might as well step up and, and, and write it and put that out in the world and see how else it can help some other people. So that's kind of what I did too. And so that'll be probably my next journey when I go back next year in LA. I will see how that goes and hopefully those books will get up. Yeah, and I have to finally, after 12 years, write my TV series. I've been better procrastinating. <laughs> but like, like John says, it's a challenge. I'm a little afraid of it. I have to face that fear. I guess my fear is if I write it and it doesn't get picked up, did I fail? No. Think about it. Oh. You and I spoke, and I told you. And you, you, you see what you did? No? Yes. Yes, yes you are. I know. So don't let us say no. everything I'm yes. trying to tell her constantly. <laughs> Last time we spoke, we talked about Romania, and I told you I scouted locations for a war picture in Romania. I was in Hungary. I was in Romania. I went to Platt's Castle, man. Oh, it was awesome. I was supposed to. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Oh, and, and you know, I had such a delightful time out there. Different Budapest, people. Bucharest and Budapest. Yeah. So I was both and right. all over there. Is that it right? <laughs> yes, I'm joking. Everything in Romanian is like S. Yeah, yeah. But I noticed they still had, and I don't know if they stopped it, but it was like one big movie set because it was after war, post war, buildings were still destroyed, rubble, but it was it was a back lot of a movie set and gorgeous buildings and some were in ruin and so you were able to go in and film a period piece, like a war movie or something like that. You might kind of build that. It's yeah. there. So I don't know if it's still there, if they kept it like that. Uh, I honestly what hope What was the name of the movie? I forgot. I scouted locations. Oh. It, never, it never happened. Oh. But they paid me to go scout locations. It's not as scary as you think Europe. You know? Like for us, the U.S. is just like a whole other game. Okay? Like Canada is. <laughs> Uh, I'll just we're, we're building, we're building, we're getting there. I'll tell you. <laughs> so this will be like we want to be. <laughs> the one thing that stood out about Hungary for me is I went to the Museum of Tolerance. Well, the Museum of Tolerance in America is extremely watered down compared to Hungary, People can't handle which it. showed you everything. And I walked out of there. It was, I don't know if surreal is the word, but I walked out of there after seeing the clips, the movies, the videos, the photos, listening to the commentary, going, 
that was not that long ago. Yeah. And it happened. But once it's forgotten. Holy cow. And uh, I, I was pretty affected by it. That's why it's watered down in the U.S. Well, I was affected by it in a good way. It helped me really, really, really understand, hit over the head, that that could never, ever, ever happen. That's why it's so important to tell stories and you, what you guys do. You never know where you end up. I mean, just a, a story. So, two guys from the Bronx end up together here, right? It can happen. It can happen. No, and, 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 and here's, the, here's the funny part about it. You go even further back. So, when we didn't know each other, but we could have, he, he ran a gym uh, north of the Bronx, a, a, a fitness gym. And I worked as an aerobic and a sales manager at another up the street a gym right up no the street from way. him. Never, never met him. At Jackie Lane, I, so I, and then my manager turned out to be friends with him and now me, <laughs> all in LA. And, and it was like three guys in the fitness and we figured that in out. the industry. Wait, 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 we figured that out. Ended up here. How we do were, we do that? We, I were, don't know. we were all on the set of 9 11. Martin Gigi, a dear friend of our director, and Nick. Stellati, who he's talking about, was yeah. there. I was there. John was there. And we all figured out that we all knew each other. Nick says to me. During the time. While we were on a movie in LA. And, 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 and like that. Nick says to me, he says, I know you. I'm like, yeah. yeah. A lot of people know me where. He's like, you work for me. I was like, I work for you where? He said, Jack Lane. I was like, what? You know, and he just flashed me back to wow. me. Wow. Teaching aerobic classes and doing all that stuff. To survive. It was Jack Lane, Yonkers, Tuckahoe Road, across yeah. from Roosevelt High School. And how we ended up in our, you know, three guys from the Bronx all end up here in the, in the film industry and changed and reinvented our lives and reinvented our lives and reinvented our lives. And here we are many times. And, and we have one more guest star that is behind the camera. Flip today. It. And it's not fair because she's doing the most incredible photography and, work. And I may point out oh, that thanks, unlike him, when he was doing it for me, he complained his arm. No, she's better. She's much better. <laughs> <laughs> she's a mean girl. I could not survive without this beautiful Tell woman. us a little bit about this beautiful lady. Well, she's got the foot. Jenny is sunshine in a human being. Oh. She is the <laughs> most incredible, joyous person you'll ever meet. Great. And she yeah. has done, yes, so very accepting yeah. and so motivating and so hardworking. I couldn't do anything I do without her. She's our manager, actually. Aw, thanks, guys. Now, are you all well. from here? Yes. I'm from St. Catharines, right by Niagara Falls in Ontario. Jenny, do you manage other talent as well, like a lot of talent, actors, singers, et cetera, et cetera? Um, well, I am absolutely dedicated to Quinn. So I do work uh, strictly with her and as well with Jill. There you go, the mighty Quinn. The mighty, <laughs> the mighty, the mighty three. Yeah, she the helps have my studio. Yeah. She helps organize my week, my day, my moments. <laughs> she makes me get up and work out in the morning. <laughs> We have been working hard, guys. My family, uh, I grew up on Vancouver Island, kind of, I was actually born just off the coast of Vancouver Island. And before that, have you always been from Vancouver? Or? My dad was born in Toronto, and my mom was born and adopted in Montreal. Okay. And they met and then moved to BC. My sister was born on a sailboat, I was born in a little cabin. It's quite the story wow. of the... So we have <laughs> Canada. Canada, Romania, Ireland, my parents, and of course, Italy. Yeah, Italy, Italy. Hungarian, and Italy. Yeah. <laughs> my grandparents, true story, they came over on a boat, past the Statue of Liberty to Ellis Island with papers, came to America, lived the dream, started a family, hearing. Yeah. Well, my parents came to Ellis Island from Ireland at the same and met in the Bronx. I'm a bit Irish. And yeah. All right. <laughs> and I've been back there about four times. And uh, that too is... Uh, it's on my bucket list. I, part you of my have bucket. to go to Italy. And you have, and to, I have to go to Ireland. Both of those are on my bucket list. So uh, we'll have magazines like that. We'll just have all the things in the front of the street that you can connect to. Um, it's it's like this, you guys. We are a different network. And you guys are Oh my gosh. Right, sure. Canada, we have the different eyes. We have different eyes. You guys didn't notice. I'm clean shaven. You are clean shaven. We noticed. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to take um, that thing off. Oh, yeah. I bet. Here's the thing. It must get food. Jessica controls that. 
I got old, so, you know, I, it was time to, you didn't need it to shave it off. No. <laughs> Why, how do you say it? I say Quattrochi. I say Quattrochi. <laughs> it's Quattrochi, it's fine, it's American. All right, so you're an American. He's making fun of my last name. <laughs> We're like, how do you say it? James Quattrochi and John Duffy, we had so much fun with you at Miracle in East Texas premiere. You guys are back for a second time in Calgary, and you have truly inspired and really helped the industry of Calgary projects here. I'm so excited we'll to see, see you all the future projects. Can't wait to come back. Thank you. Thank you both for having us, all of you for having us and we're so, uh, thank you for, thank you. They're the real stars. <laughs> next Miss Universe, right? All right. See you next year. All right. And, video, and a picture? Behind the scenes.